no. Unreachable. Hopefully I'll be able to get him back. Here. There it is. I already answered it. Stop it. Wait for others to join. No. There we go. That was weird. Room. All right. That was weird. I think we're good. It doesn't seem to be freaking out. Let me make sure I got Oh, right. yep. And you're not on a full screen. There we go. Looking good. What you drinking there, buddy? A little Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm finishing up this bottle of wine, and then I'm not going to drink until I get to Norway. I'm supposed to go to Oslo uh, next week. This time next week, I should be on the plane. Fucking dope. So, yeah, well, you know, Mary and I are getting married, so we have to go meet with the... Um, the officiator, I have to go get my marriage affidavit and prove that uh, that I am legal to get married. Because I was married before, they have to see the divorce papers. Ugh, what a nightmare. So I have to pr provide... Dude, the, the bureaucracy of this whole situation has been... It's been an ordeal, for sure. But, <laughs> uh, you know, we're... I, I'm down to do whatever you got to do. I, I will do whatever I have to do. I, you know, there... I, I love being a rebel when I was a kid, but at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I'll just follow the fucking rules. It is, get it done. It's a lot you easier. I mean? just, get what, just get it done. I found out. Yeah, yeah, my <laughs> saying is like, I found out that if you pay your bills ahead of time, life is just way simple. I, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. I don't know what I was fucking thinking, dude. I've, been, I'm, I've got money all the time now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because I'm not, you know. But also, I have free weed. Mm. Lots and lots of free weed, mm. so. All right. Did we get that second question, or did we just kind of go off on another tangent? Oh, you were in the middle of answering it, kind of. Um, yeah. No, I think I answered yeah, it. Yeah, you answered I it good. Just, I mean, yeah, just saying, like, I, in retrospect, I realize I haven't had a lot of control, but I also don't really feel like that's, um, that's a real thing. I mean, control, like safety, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. We don't actually have that. We don't really have that. And the fact that if you think that you have that is means that um, you have some kind of preconceived notion of how things should be, and I don't have that. No. If I've learned anything about that, is that shit gets taken away fast, man. you got to be ready to move on your feet and 100%. readjust. So you're going to be a dual yeah, citizen most, then? Uh, well, I wish. that. I mean, yeah, that's the, Down the... ultimate... That's that would be, but that takes so long. Oh yeah, it's like a certain. That takes like a. I have to live there for a certain amount of time. She has to live here for a certain amount of times. So like once we get married, then I got to get it registered here, and you know, there's it's a lot of fucking bureaucracy. We just want to be together, you know, and and the whole marriage thing wasn't even really like, a, oh well, we need to be married to get to be together, but internet like, that's fine if you are both citizens of the same country. But if we're international, if we're, you know, we have to, if we want to actually have a successful union. Like, I had need to be able to enter Norway at yeah, will. Be, she yeah. needs to be able to enter America at will. You know, I mean, if so you're cool, going to have any success, you know, I mean, this, yeah, we've been dealing with it this far, um, so far, but this isn't how we want to live. You know what I mean? This isn't how we want to continue the relationship indefinitely. No, we have goals of being together. We have goals of traveling together, have goals of living together and, and whatnot. And the, the only way that we can do that is if we get married and I'm, I'm in, man. I'm have you... so in that that's, that's just a detail. Yeah. It's a minor detail. No, and it didn't make so... it. And it's a, it's just a little bit of work, man. And it ain't never hurt nothing. That's you know, if you're willing to go through yeah. all that, have you left the country yeah. before? You strike me as someone who probably has. Not not you know? international, not uh, overseas. No, really? you know, then Mexico, Canada. But it's like that's 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 nothing. I mean, yeah. and and both of those countries, not even just across the border. Just yeah, they're kind of you know just, what I mean. Just yeah. to get the just to get the good drugs. But like you're uh, about to be a worldly man, man. Yeah, international. Well, this, this was the. This was the goal. This was the goal from the get go. You know, I always actually wanted to live and experience America, all the cool places of America before I left the country. I, I, need, I wanted to make sure that, you know, Julian's child support was taken care of. And once I was taken care of, then, you know, at the same time, like experiencing America, like the cool places. Yeah. New York, Portland, Seattle, Austin, you know, San Francisco, L.A., like all these places I've experienced. And 
you know, there's only a couple of more before I'm like, all right, well, cool. Let's, uh, Where, uh, let's skedaddle. When did you move? How long before the, the, the Rona hit? Were you getting to actually experience life there on the East Coast madness that is the big city, the New York, the comedy clubs? Did he, yeah, I, well, did I he got, get to do any of that? Like, I didn't do much uh, comedy clubs. Um, I did see some comedy at venues that were like, you know, they're just venues, not yeah. particularly comedy clubs. But um, I did see a lot of music, man. A lot of fucking music. I saw Mike Patton a couple times here. I saw him at Dead Cross. Oh. I saw him with Dillinger Escape Plan. Oh. You know, I saw Phil. I saw Phil Ensemble with uh, the New Illegals. Yes. You know, uh, I, I've seen like some shit. I saw Elton John. I saw Nine Inch Nails. You know, damn, like, I was, damn, um, damn. Yeah. yeah, like all great. Hey, I will admit, shit, just know. leave it a last because I live. You came from a from the states. You probably knew that shows existed, and you go to multiple ones. You know. For me, coming here the first four years, dude, I, I caught up in, I, I saw, I, dude, so many bands, so many things, just like as seen on TV, as I always called it, like, <laughs> yeah. Pat Eblen took me to the Paramount, and I got to see the Eagles of Death Metal, which I'm not impressed, whatever they are, neither the Eagles or the Death Metal, but, but Mastodon, <laughs> Mastodon yeah. won me the yeah. fuck over, dude, they won me the fuck yeah. over, and, uh, they go some weird book. But anyways, yeah, that, that was a I remember being in the Paramount being like, I went to light a joint and I looked down and it was like this gilded carpet and I look around and it's all shiny and beautiful. I'm all, I can't, I can't smoke a joint in here, dude. This is like, this is a nice place. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is wrong. Yeah. No. No, I was able to experience some cool shit here before, um, before it all went down. And I was, you know, um, playing, starting to get out in the, in the performing you know, I, I, there was a few spots that I was regularly hitting. Yeah, I was seeing your, your point out videos there. Yeah, and uh, that link that I sent you was from a guy that, that I've met. His name is Nick Westman, and he put um, together a you know a collaboration of these of the open micers at this place at the at Pete's Candy Store here in Williamsburg, which is actually a pretty famous uh, <coughs> venue. And they have a really super intimate uh, open mic. It's like held in a train car, like it's a train car in the back of a bar, and they just decorate it up. And there's, you know, it's it's super tight and super intimate, but the sound is cool and everybody's chill, and they're there to see the music. They're not you're not playing in front of a bunch of fucking loud idiots, you know. It, they're they're there to see the art, and there's a there's a, a, a good conglomeration of different types of music. And so I was slowly, slowly becoming a part of that. And, and, um, that's how I was able to get on this playlist that this guy, Nick had put together, uh, at the, uh, kind of like the peak. Well, I don't know about the peak, but as the pandemic was going and we can't play, he's like, you know what, let's like, we're all writing, we're all posting shit. Let's, he want, he, let's put together, put together a playlist, send me your tracks. And, and, uh, so that was like, oh, cool. I'm like part of starting to become a part of my environment you know as a musician yeah and um but then you know, now it's all it's gone on it's this pandemic has gone on so long i think people are just like what the fuck is happening i yeah. don't uh, hopefully know, people are starting to come to terms with a little bit and understand that it's not a quick fix it's going to be here for a little while but we control how how it moves forward and i think now maybe there might be some shit happening that may at least get us focused where people are getting the right knowledge and the ever changing knowledge, uh, folks, that's yeah. how this works. Yeah. This, this, uh, yeah. surprise. I, I feel like this is kind of like a training session for where some, some venues of music are going to be. It's not just about live shows anymore. There is a, a, a human creature now that would prefer to never leave the safety of their bubble yeah, literally at this point and, and be able to watch sure. it virtually. And to me, it's just another way to get it out there promotional and make money as bands because God damn it, unless it's merchandise, we're not, if, if the shows aren't happening anymore, it's going to be through Vimo and motherfucking PayPal and charities and, and shit like that. So as bad as yeah. it is, maybe this will help a little bit. It's it's not going to go away. I agree with no. you 100%. It's a it's a new thing that um what's that old expression uh necessity 
is the mother of invention. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and that's exactly what we're dealing with as musicians and creators. Um, it, it, like the last track that I wrote, I was like, okay, this is cool. This is different. I've never done anything like this before, really. And, and I don't know much about this genre of music, but I do know somebody who does. So I'm going to send it to that dude who lives on the other side of the country. And he was like, oh, well, send me the wave without the drum. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cause you know, that was the weakest part of the track I had created anyways. And it was more about the, the, the vibe and the vocals. And, and he sent me back what he did. And I was like, this shit is fucking, this, I love this. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I put, yeah. Some, I put some, yeah, I put some video to it, you know, and I was like, this is, this is fun. You know, this is great. And, and I'm noticing it all over, uh, you know, there's a, you know, not that I'm a, a proponent of, of any kind of, of um social media <clears throat> platform but TikTok <coughs> has a new feature and a lot of new things have been going on there's a whole duet thing going on now where like musicians are like hey check this out i got this loop or i got this um guitar piece here's the chords blur they flip up on the screen somebody sing over this and now yeah. people from all over the fucking world and the countries are, are just like okay yeah let's do it and you like now you're jamming with people you a you've never met and b live on the other side of the fucking planet no matter and i what, feel that that is uh there is nothing so much fun there is so much i fun. mean as a yeah. as an atheist to each their own but i do believe god is music and it's only word i can attach to it i believe in our modern language that really describes what i'm saying it's the all being all knowing if 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 creativity art in any form spreads to more and more people that's more people feeling joy or yeah. or dealing with massive heartache sorrow and pain through the healing of music and being able to share that is bringing more people together and and then that that's why the creative art is just as ne necessary as <laughs> you know the worker bees and and yeah it's a yeah. balance god damn it but I just, I, I love to see it. I love to see the connection. <laughs> yeah, once it got to this whole, because I, I don't really do it. Uh, I actually quit a long time ago, but. Um, Good for you, man. The last time I was, I was with that, I was doing dabs. And I'm just like, this is, this is too much. I'm like, it, I don't need to feel like I'm dying. No, you know, that's it. To, you know what I mean? I, like I this is, thing. there's no reason for this anymore. And uh, <sighs> once I, just like what you were saying with uh, quitting the drinking, like the, it just wasn't doing anything anymore. Yeah. And if I have to result to fucking like turning cannabis into crack, like, that's, dude, like, that's the first time I, I ever saw it. it. It's, 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 I'm done. Like, I'm Somebody's done. like, dude, you want to get stoned? I'm like, sure. And I go in his garage and his buddy's got a torch and a rig. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> You're like, what? No, it's just dab. And I'm like, what the fuck is a dab, dude? Like, And then they explained it to me. I'm like, so it's like hash? No. Yeah, and no. then I took two because I'm me. So I was like, Shh. they're like, well, slow down. I was like, don't fucking tell me to slow down, bitch. And I literally don't remember getting home. I mean, like a, like a kid. And I've eaten some edibles, yeah. too, that are, it's too much, man. And that's not what weed was about. Weed's a ritual. Weed's a bringing it together, man. Yeah, but that's just because we're old, man. When you reach that age where you're like, you know, back in my day, we used to smoke pot uphill both ways because we had to walk to get it, motherfuckers. We didn't get to go to yeah. no store. Fuck. Yeah, they don't know nothing about pulling out stems and seeds and shit. No, yeah. get one in the eye. <laughs> or thinking you had like the fattest <laughs> nug ever and it's all seeds. Remember those oh. seeds? Oh, that's the worst. You're like, oh, dude, look how dense it is. You're like, crack that Remember? open. Remember? Remember we used to smoke that shit and then and like you pop you burn a seed and you're like oh am I gonna become impotent now? You know? Dude, <laughs> you're smoking that shit, yeah. <laughs> I think the aluminum yeah. cans and the brass pipes and everything else we smoked out of may have had, but I've got yeah. six kids, so I don't know. Woo! I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where. Yeah. You don't gotta worry about that shit. No. <laughs> well, be. I'm excited, yeah. dude. That's great. Uh, caught up in a lot and filled in a lot of gaps about you, man. We've known each other a long time. You are why I hate the Deftones. Uh, your love for the Deftones and the time of my life when I was bad because you got the awesome job of being the singer of Machine Course, which you were amazing at. Uh, and Thank still you. that version. Here's the thing, man. It wasn't... Here, when they asked me to do that, it, it was like a just fill in kind of thing because we have these gigs. But honestly, it was, I love, I love, um, jamming with Chuck. Chuck you know I mean? is a machine. But that was it. Yeah. I mean, he was like, 
I will play with that dude in any incarnation that he ever asked me to play with. And and that was yeah. all it was. It wasn't really like I, I had any kind of. And then all of a sudden he's like, like, I've never he's so good. I've never he's seen so good ever anything yeah. like that. And then we get to play with them in Machine Corpse and Tommy Lee, bless his heart. Great drummer. But no, nothing. Not, not, I think he's Chuck, so good. Yeah. And just and he looks like he's shopping for like, 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 did I add milk to my to my I can't <laughs> look over. He gives you the nod like, yeah, go ahead, go. You're like favorite musicians are drummers, and um, oh, that's he, weird. I, I I've been I've been uh, um, in the presence of like really phenomenal drummers. I've gone to shows just to see drummers, uh, and certain bands like I saw Cynic open for Cannibal Corpse back in the late '90s, and I had, was able to be literally like at the stage, and Sean Reinhart was the drummer for Cynic at that time. And his kit was turned sideways. So, like, I'm looking at him sideways in his kit. Oh, nice. I mean, it was just, oh, my God. So, yeah, my favorite musicians are drummers, 100%. That's a trip. And uh, I've and never even Ch- thought of Ch- them as musicians before. Oh, my God. See, it's shit like that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I just don't get it. I don't get drums. I know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I get it, and I wish that I got it more in the way that they get it. But um, That's crazy. That's the thing is I just love him and, and he's such a such a badass that I wasn't gonna say no like I, and sometimes I like I said I I'm a yes guy in a lot of situations I'm just like oh yes Dude, it was a good without fit any, man without it was any great consideration you know so and I hey, look out of every uh, band here, here's the thing I wanted to say here's the thing I want to say before we go we have been connected without being connected yeah right like we have a lot of mutual friends oh, yeah. and they love you and they love me and we love them and we're always just have been like this we've had a couple of interactions a couple of not great a couple pretty cool but mostly we've been on this like perimeter of each other that is know? true this is the first time you and i have have actually had a one-on-one and i was really looking forward to talking to you me too man because no. of that because i i know you're a fucking awesome dude i respect you as a as a front man as a vocalist oh, as you. a metalhead and, um, you know, I knew this was going to be a really cool conversation. Yeah, I was, I was looking forward excited. to it. A lot of people were yeah. looking forward to it. Plus, a lot of people miss you a lot. I, <laughs> yeah. I, that opportunity. So now that's my desperate, hypocritical cry to anybody younger than me or anybody, which is the cry of the old wise man, which is, oh, my God, do it. Take the chance. Be scared. Yeah. You said that earlier. Yeah. Like, that yeah. literally, science has proven. I mean, our brains are wired to be migrational anyways or move on and find new sources of whatever. Uh, it, it builds new synapses. It makes your yeah. brain fire new neurons when you go on these scary adventures. When you go, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what it's going to yep. be like. Going to New York yeah. for me is terrifying because I'm nothing but, uh, uh, what is that, uh, stereotypes. I'm assuming as soon yeah. as I get there, a subway's going to run me over while stabbing me in the face, and then I'm going to have a pizza. I, like, I don't know what the fuck a New York is. Like Here's like, here's like uh, was another quick story. That fear... <laughs> Of, of coming here like actually played out so like i came here with in a relationship i came here with a woman and it was cool um <coughs> but she ended up getting so pissed at me for, for, and rightly so but uh got so pissed at me that she like what like was so pissed that she was like kicking me out of the apartment that we live in right and i don't know fucking anybody really on the level to where i could be like yo i need a fucking place to crash not really yeah you know what i mean so i'm like fuck do i like run back to you know my mom do i run back to anchorage and have my friends take care of me it's like i was like in a real fucking pickle for about 36 hours and it turned out that and i had met a, a dude here at an open mic the one i was going to at pete's and we had gotten this really great conversation. I told him my story. He was like, hey, what's going on with you? You look like a little, uh, you look upset. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like in the middle of like getting broken up with via text. And I told him my story. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. This is what's happening right now. And he's like, holy shit. I've been kind of going through the same thing right now with the, with my girl and this and that. And so we got in this vibe and it was great. And he was like, you know what? I think I actually know somebody who needs a roommate Damn. like right now and like in this neighborhood. And I was like, 
hook, hook me up, dude. So he like did a couple of text messages, came back within the hour. He's like, dude, go to this place down the street right now. They need to meet you. Like, and boom, like I found a place super quick. I was able to get out of it, you know, and I, it was just that, that, that there was a boom, boom, scary boom, moment. Yeah. Just like a fucking moment where you're just like, dude, it's just about to fall apart for you, man. And you know, you just never know what's going to fucking happen again. And no control right now. No, no control. control. No control. But the right no decisions, control. though, man. At least you know. At least you hey. put yourself on that path. And I think accepting I the no it control, it, it it helps you. It helps you when you get when it doesn't work out for you, and when it does work out for you, you kind of get to take more pride. And this is all new to my dumbass because I'm a negative creep. I'm a negative creep. I'm a negative creep when I'm stoned. <laughs> I have I had to say that. I'm sorry. You don't have to. There, I feel like um, you know. I don't know if I'll ever lose my edge. I actually am like going to release some, some, a uh, little bit more distorted things here soon just for fun. But, um, you know, there's enough shit in the world to be pissed off about, man. There is, if you really think about it, uh, I can get angry. I can get angry. Yeah. I yeah. Can get really fucking pissed. Don't burn out on anger though, man. Come yeah, on. This yeah. last four years, but like... you can't, but you can, I'm yeah. just saying like you could, you could, you could channel it is what I'm saying. Yeah. No, you know, that's like, it. There's I... enough, there's enough, uh, there to channel it. I, I feel like I deliberately have just been like, eh. even my Facebook, I don't even like, I'm known for going off and saying, I just make a complete ass asshole of myself. And like, I've literally uh, compared it to exactly getting off of fucking alcohol. You were so fucking good. You were so good in the first band I saw you in. And then the next week in the other band I saw you in. Oh, the what? Oh, you're in that band too. Cool. Cool. All right. How many bands does this motherfucker need? And then you were the sound guy at a venue. And then you were this guy. And then, and then it wouldn't matter who replaced me back then in Machine Corps. It was. It wasn't replacing me. By the way, the thing about it is Chris no. Martin is Machine Corps. Anybody else in that band is is just helping Chris with his time mission. He's from the future. You know, there's a book I'm writing yeah, about it. It really is. Yeah. yeah so there's so is. many players that could come in and out of it, and so many different versions of it. What I love is when he gets back into the mood and he now he has taken his setup to a new level where it's everything he used to do is now I don't know. I think it's I think it's activated by his dick or something, dude. He comes he goes to such strange Probably. new levels. But like it's all I know he had the one where you could I was like, what the fuck, man? And he's sending yeah. me shit now that is redefining some concepts of the music. He's so happy now. He's so happy, and he's got so. It's so good to see, dude. And and this new band he's doing, holy shit! And then Chuck's new band that they're in, holy shit! And then Chuck's studio, all the, there is the groundwork for a huge, new, scene, for for Alaska. I think after COVID, that's gonna happen everywhere. Jadedness gone, happiness, gratefulness. When I mean, it's gonna be new things about it, new ways we do things. But God damn it, that's what we do. We adapt, right? We well, finally go. People, if we have a lot of people are saying, you know, or that just like a hundred years ago, when they when they had to deal with their pandemic, and they had to deal with their, you know, prohibition at that time, and we're dealing with ours with like legalizing drugs and certain things, and our pandemic, you know, uh, this is our twenties. This is going to be our roaring twenties. Yeah. Once this shit like kind of like once we get like a grip on it and and i don't think it's gonna be like uh and i had this conversation before with, with my with my girlfriend mary but it's like i don't think it's gonna be like this switch and okay world we're open again it's yeah. gonna happen in pockets it's gonna happen in pockets different cities different areas and be like you know we we got it under control we can open another city another town we got it under control we can open it's gonna happen you know here and there um but it's very it's gonna happen, you know. It, it's yeah. inevitable. This isn't the one to kill us. You know what you bugs know, this me? This is the one to. And, and we're gonna have our role. There was one before the hundred year ago one, the the Spanish flu or whatever. They didn't have the technology to look back and see pictures of people doing the exact same fucking mistakes that we did. Uh, but my whole theory, and I'll just make a brief, comes to division. We are born from division. We are created from division. I believe that nature seeks balance in every aspect. And our poor little monkey asses that think we're so far advanced are yeah, have no control. As you just just and 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 we're such a, a a tiny part of such a huge, not even machine. I mean, just existence. Uh, I forgot. Yeah. Damn it! 
I try to make good points with smart people. Well, I'm, and I just I'm drop with you, it, though. though. I'm with you because, yeah. like, my pro- <laughs> this is my problem. My fucking struggle with humanity is that um, there, there is a elite one percent there is they have all the money they have all the fucking power mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but my problem is is that there's so many of us that aren't the elites that are just the the worker bees and if we could just be like you know what how about we eat them yeah i think and something's we just going can't to eat fucking them. agree to do it we can't agree i don't understand why because no matter what side you're on we all just want to do the same thing. We want to provide for our families. We want to fucking eat. We want to fuck. We want to drink. We just want to have a good time and feel safe and feel happy. And if we all just agreed that whatever it is that has to happen to make that happen, that's great. Well, that doesn't matter right, left, red, blue. Yeah. Fucking. That's the you know, dream, isn't about, it, my friend? How about we just, like, eat these top elite? You know what I mean? And and get rid of that. I, I feel like we could if we wanted to. The first just, thing would be to, to stop. Uh, feeding cap or not capitalism even commercialism uh, you know I mean like if people want I look dude I'm guilty I don't know if you could see the cool red lights I have that I've been spinning on Amazon and my blue Yeti mm-hmm. and, and all the things that I want and need um, sure. the that, with it? to do that I have to go to work to get these things and and that distracts from like that you know here it's so frustrating because we we make all these hero movies and all these end of the world movies where everybody every nation gets together at the goddamn end and we survive i'm starting to think that's some bullshit bro i think yeah. i think the fights everybody makes it onto the boats but then the boats divide and then the the fighting and then the last boat just bleep, yeah. and mother nature's like jesus fucking yeah. christ i fucked that up or even what this is only this is like not the first time we've made it to this level and all the proof of that's being grinded under millions of years of fucking glaciers and we've done this before and there's colonies of us out there already because we left this fucking planet the last time it blew up and we fucked it all up and then it reset i mean dude who are we yeah. to think we are anything i got i got maybe if i'm lucky 20 good years left maybe if i'm lucky 30 good years i mean stem cell science has got to be around the fucking corner for people like me and you same um you yeah, know and I, and i'm so let's just say this we are living are we not in the greatest time of of our time well, i think i mean yeah it, yeah yeah no for sure what murders we down are definitely yeah exactly if you want to like look back this is the safest time this is the most productive time. This is the most ingenious time. 100%. Um, I just, I you know, feel people don't focus here? on it. I don't it. know. We're, exactly. Well, nobody wants to focus on it. Hey, man, nobody I got five focus kids. focus on their fucking, you of know. blood. I am, I am getting off this planet. Maybe not in this body, but in a couple <laughs> hundred years, there's going to be a dude that looks just like me running around on Ursula 7 or wherever the fuck we're going. Uh I, I truly believe genetics are eternity, you know? I used to think it was YouTube videos, but then I realized satellites could go down, man. And then I'm phew, ghost. I must yeah. live forever. And I'm an well, atheist, you know, so I got to have some physical thing, proof. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, here, I, I mean, if you really think about it, and I get into it a lot, I mean, this might actually open up a whole other thing, and I know we got to end this session, but... <laughs> yeah, we're at an hour what, already. It's like, it's like what... It... There is no proof of an actual uh, eternity. Everything ends. It's almost like, it's almost like, uh, how long do we want to prolong the inevitable? Mm-hmm. You know, like we are eventually going to, everything is eventually going to expire. Everything is going to come be cooled down to its, you know, slowest movable state, and not be able to provide life for anything. And that, that, I mean, that's a long, long time from now. So yeah. it's like, yeah, sure. It's like we can, we are, we're just prolonging the inevitable, you know? I'm for prolonging the inevitable. Oh. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no, no. I just. Uh, know, it is going to end for it, everybody. The our sun's going to end. If it's our sun's a 10 billion year sun. We're halfway there. Yeah. You know, but before the end, it'll be. You know, millions of years of it sw- swelling and swallowing up all the inner planet. Yeah. Are we going to survive that? No. no. We're not going to survive that. Do we have to get off the planet? Yeah. Are we going to survive inter- intergalactic space travel? Probably not. 
dimensional yeah. shifts too, though, yeah. man. They're go- they're gonna come across science, quantum physics, and shit, and crazy shit that we can't even imagine. It in the end, yeah, and but how quantum do we- physics, quantum physics doesn't affect our macro physics. That's no, true. It, it doesn't. I mean, it's not. We can't. We're three dimensional beings. We can't just live in five dimensions. We're, that doesn't. That's not how it works. It's like saying like we could just live in two dimensions. That's just not. We could just like be a part of this fucking piece of wood. That's not. That's not reality. Yeah. We can't move interdimensionally. That's not a real thing. You know, if we can move inter, you know, spatially, intergalactically, interuniversally, you know, the whole multi, the multi universe thing. Sure, that's mathematically been proposed, but but those are still going to end in themselves, that? right? Are we going to achieve that? Are we going to achieve that? I doubt it. We're not. I seriously doubt. We it. might be stuck in the it. CERN collider right now in an infinitely expanding black hole just because some kid figured it out, and then that explains 2012 and how Betty White's still alive, dude. She just turned 99. <laughs> It can't be right. She's still kicking, man. Yeah. She's still kicking. She's still kicking. I want She's whatever. I want to know what the hell what she eats. It's probably just nothing. It's probably just internet memes. She just sustains on the humor. This is a lot. I tell you, and after I talk with us, like, I have a thousand ideas for pie. I'd love to have a Zoom meeting with like you and a couple other people we love and know and have these kind of talks. You know, you could have your wife on there, or I'm sorry, your fiance. Still fiance. Yeah. Fiance fiance. Still. Is that what they call it so in Nor- in Nor- in, Nor- in so Norway? Do you have to? Are you are you excited about learning another language and shit? Well, I've been I've been learning. No yeah. shit. Say no, something. A, I've been, you know. Um, what you got? Y I R, ma. You know, uh, it's like, I'm a man. You know, I'm, that's I'm, all I'm, you need. Like the base. I'm the basics. I'm 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 in the basics right now. I've been on this app called Duolingo. I love, dude. I've been and, using it to learn Spanish yeah. so I could sell weed to my customers. There so you go. far, I know Mota. But whatever, dude. <laughs> I can't get that. Are they teaching Mota on Duolingo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cigarlo, they, you uh, know, cigarlos are joys. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've been uh, I've been on it for a few months now, and so That's yeah. Cool. What exciting once adventure! I, once I get married, uh, and I try and I get my residency, I'm required to to learn the language, and they have the classes, and and of course I'll be immersed. But I was there, you know, just back in September, and most everybody still speaks English. I mean, they also speak English. Yeah, well, so. we're the only slackers in that shit. I've ate it. Even, I remember being 13 here and speak English or die. And I was like, well, wait, that's not fair. Like, we we, we, we open the borders. And we bring us our sick and our, but you better fucking not try to talk to me, motherfucker, unless you learn my language. Like, what a weakness. What a weakness a, a tool that you could have in your arsenal as a human being to be able to have a conversation with anybody. We used to. Yeah. I was just watching, uh, it was not Cosmos, but it was with that. It was Neil deGrasse. He was just talking about that. Like, it, it, this new adversity towards everything, these conflicts, it's not who we are naturally. Naturally, we're curious and we want to, what are you eating? What is that? Why are you doing that with that? Where do you put it? Do, you, do your people like it in the butt? Because my wife doesn't and... I want to move to your village. <laughs> you know, shit like that, dude. Like, we can learn so much from other cultures. Nah, that's bullshit. You it's know what free. I was concerned of with, with, with Sesame Street? Because I had to, I had gotten introduced to same-sex couples really early. I, we actually, my mother uh, had, we had lived with uh, um, these two lesbians early, early on just to, like, you know, survive. And she was, you know, getting us out of a shitty situation with, with my father. But... Um, so I got introduced to that, and I'm like, "This is normal. This is cool. These are amazing people." But then you got Bert and Ernie. I'm like, right, "What's going on with these two dudes? Yeah, are they yeah. are they together? They seem like they're together, you know." And I'm not judging. I'm just curious. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I was always, you know, on on that tip. I'm like, well, "What's happening with all these guys? You know, what's up with with Oscar? Is he actually pissed, or is he just what? Uh, what? lonely? Yeah, you know is he, I mean? does like... he represent the homeless people? <laughs> I, I don't. I never. Yeah. And why did I relate to Oscar the Grouch so much? <laughs> You know, exactly. Fuck. I didn't exactly. know you were that old, bro. Fuck. Yeah, I'm shit. Pretty old, dude. Yeah, we, we grew old. up watching the same fucking cartoons and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. trip. He Man, She Ra. I'm a fucking He Mom, a He Man, Voltron, G.I. Joe. Voltron! Transformers motherfucker. You know what I mean? Back when they tried <laughs> to instill a little bit of values in kids, man, when the parent, nobody died in G.I. Joe. You know, nobody ever died in our cartoons growing up. Here's the thing, though. Try to watch G.I. Joe now. Oh, I can't. No. 
dude. Try it's to watch Flash fucking, Gordon. It's the most fucking propaganda fucking bullshit. Oh, seriously, I, bet. Dude. I didn't even think of it for that. Dude, point. it's suck. It, dude, try take go watch some YouTube bits of some old GI Joe episodes. It is the Man. most American like Django American fucking propaganda shit ever. That's crazy. I'm like, I can't watch this. I yeah. can't watch this. My YouTube right yeah. now, thank you very much, is all Star Wars, the Clone Wars, uh, <laughs> all Mandalorian. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And WandaVision, which that show's about ready to suck my dick, but I know it's going to be awesome. I know that what they're doing. I it, heard it was good. Dude, it's a dick move, though. No, it's not. First I off, I, fuck, I like hate... John, like, my, like our boy John JT, John Carter, said, that, and I trust his judgment, because he'd tell you... He shit is was Marvel. He is... His the superpower Mar- yeah. is knowing exactly. this shit. If he was like, this is bullshit, don't worry. Like, don't, he would tell us. Straight up. Look, I like, like it. It's different. It, it's personal different. biased. Okay, I, I, my mom made me watch a lot of uh, Bewitched, a lot of uh, the Mary Tyler Moore <laughs> shit. You know, those were all, I Love Lucy. Those black and white shows were yeah. what, what our parents watched and what, yeah. what, what, the sitcoms. And we watched and reruns. MASH, yeah, and I love reruns. MASH and shit, but so just seeing that black, like I am a, I'm the weirdest anti-retro guy. Like I grew up loving Poison and Winger <laughs> and Butt Rock, dude, but God help you if you try <sighs> to get me to listen to that shit now. Rat. You know, stuff like that. And now I, I denounce it all. Metallica. I've denounced most of that. But it's because I listen to it now and I don't... I'm sad. I'm like, I used to think that was the heaviest shit in the world. But, like, I don't like new stuff either. So what the fuck am I? I'm a close my Well, what's, what's funny is, like, when I got turned on to Metallica, it was when, when Master Puppets came out. And so I was that age when I got introduced to it. But I immediately jumped from Metallica to Exodus to um napalm to yes. DSI to yes. I immediately jumped to that like I... to death like Chuck Skuldiner. You know what I mean? Like I like what I was like it was almost like the next day. I was like, yeah. well if this shit's fucking exists, what else exists? No, I you know I uh unfortunately I kinda kind of hung out with Metallica and Bon Jovi. I love and, Metallica. And, and, I no, I know, but like they were the heaviest to me until I was on a bus on a people mover and this big native kid who I came really good friends with named Kenny comes up to me and he grabs my, my headphone off my ear. He goes, what's that pussy shit? And then he took his Walkman <laughs> and he fucking slapped it on my ear and it was uh rain and blood. And I, I remember like, it changed me like right then and there, yeah. you know? And then I just, uh, I was Slayer forever. I was, my nickname was Slayer for a long time. God damn, dude. I've always been. A I little, love Slayer. Little, I, like, I, I never like, thoroughly got into i love slayer but and, and actually like my first real concert experience that was on my you know decision was slayer it was slayer megadeth anthrax oh. and um and alice in chains when oh. first came out you motherfuckers and it was states. the uh you guys get to see so, all the good shows in the day that would be are you kidding was, me they, they were they were the that was one show that was called clash of the titans <laughs> yeah i know and i read I, about I, it in I, magazines and such and watched it and on the so VH1. like that was my i'm like 15 that was my first like real concert that i went to on my own with my friends and uh and i fuck man i was like that's that's insane but i never really fully like uh-oh. loved Slayer the way that, you know, you obviously loved it. And then you got to imagine also being a metalhead in Alaska back then, they didn't come. Nobody came to Alaska. Nobody ever came to Alaska. Yeah. So we were hard fucking core fans. Man. But I didn't, my first concert was Brian Adams. I wanted off the radio. And I thought I was going to take my neighbor girl and woo her. And the minute we walked in, she ran off with a group of her friends. So there's Dennis in his jean jacket with his jean shirt and his jeans with a big lighter <laughs> and fucking Brian Adams with tears. And I'm literally, I was like, one day I'm going to be a singer. Because I remember that, though. I remember everybody was focused on that dude. Nobody was ignoring that yeah. dude. That guy with that microphone, yeah. it was a god. Here's, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm going to give you uh, the reason why I like the deftones oh here we go this is going in i was i was uh 17 when i got introduced to the deftones and it was by a a girlfriend at the time and she actually had like a little in with them because they hadn't blown up yet this is before adrenaline this is before anything and i had gotten i had gotten two cassettes it was deftones and it was corn i got two like demos they're like hey you should check these dudes out they're gonna blow up uh corn was already on their way 
but um, I had listened to him and I was like, oh, these guys are from Sacramento. I was living in Sacramento. Like, like there was like intertwining like high schools. I was a freshman. They were seniors, you know, it was like in, in like the high school down the street. And I was like going to see them just because it was like, you know, they're local. They're little local dudes and they were all about Sacramento. And then I was living there as a teenager. But one thing I loved about him is like, at that time was Pantera, Metallica, Slayer, Sepultura. You know, there was like all this, like the, this metal shit. And they were doing something so different and all revolved around smoking weed and getting laid. And sure that at a 17 year old. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. That I was like, I can relate to that. You know what I mean? And they weren't like doing all these flamboyant fucking like cheesy leads every bridge and every you know every time that they had just, and they yeah. weren't you know there was no spandex and hairspray and it was just uh and it wasn't grunge and it was you know it was just something so it was all for us like stoner like horny dudes and women and, and chicks you know what i mean it was and that's chicks. why you know what i mean and they were like i'd go to their shows and before they blew up they're just like fucking drunken assholes on stage. They sucked, man. They were not yeah. good. Like I saw them in Berkeley. I'd seen them in free shows behind, at the parking lot, Tower Records. It was like, they were not good. They were just like sloppy, dreaded out fucking drunk stoner dudes, like talking shit. And, you know, and I, I could relate to that. But when White Pony came out, <clears throat> their second, their sophomore fucking release, like that's when money got behind them. Yeah. That's when like they were like getting recognized. That's when the city of Sacramento was like, "Hey, you guys are local. You guys have been doing benefits and like contributing to charity and da da da." And there was like this kind of communal thing with them, you know. They were like all about Sacramento, and uh, and the city. Like the I went to a show at the Memorial, at when White Pony came out, and like assistant to the mayor came out and presented them with a fucking plaque. They were like. You guys have been contributing to the community, your whole experience, and now you got money behind you, and you're representing, and we love you. And it was like this kind of communal thing, and so that kind of stuck with me. Uh, all right, all right, they've all always right. been they've always been different, you know. No. Not that I like think that they're like you know great. They got some cool shit, you know what I mean? They, oh, I won't they, deny that they're they've great. They've got some. They've got some cool shit. Never had a problem I mean, with them until yeah, I decided I mean, that I did like them because you liked them because I am <laughs> Dennis and that's how my brain works. Silly man. But I just like that they like they go in and out. You know, they yeah. go, they go in and out. They they can be heavy. They can be soft. They can be whatever. I like so hearing. I just like hearing. I, that I can appreciate that. You got to see them when they were before they were you know big. Fucking, this has been a great talk, and I've also loved this because I've gotten to know people a little bit better, and I've yeah, always had exactly. mad respect for you, dude. And you are a musician and a talented guy and a good guy. Like everybody loves you, but never had anything against you, man. And you know, it didn't matter when the first time I saw, I think it was a video of you guys, or maybe it was a live something. I was like, well, fuck, look at him. And for them, I'm always like, it must've been nice to have an adult in the band. You know, look, look at all these videos they're putting out and all this shit. It's, you know, it was awesome. But we dude. all have our thing. We all have our thing, man. Like you, you definitely, like I said, man, you've got some fucking serious edge. Yeah. You got some serious rawness. You have a passion. The uh, and you can't deny that. The Alaska know? music scene is a hard thing to leave, and then try to compare any other scene. I don't know about down there, but I mean, there is music, of course, but it's it feels a little more jaded. Like uh, the appreciation when you got a bunch of dudes that just drove 20 to 10 miles to get to a bar in the middle of the winter to watch their friends jam. And there's a crowd of maybe 20 to 30 people or, you know, and then they do this all the time. It was a bond, like in different bands and things you come here and it's just, I don't know. It might be Washington too, though. I mean, the, the, the music scene here is very, yeah, whatever. Like, mm. I don't know how to describe it, dude. It was a weird feeling. I hope it goes away now. I hope people are appreciative again when you have to stand I in a mosh pit I'm, four feet apart yeah. from each other. Moshing's yeah. about yeah, to be no, weird. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sticks and fucking yeah, like, pool, yeah. noodles, pool noodles. Dude, you know I mean? Just no, so. I, I've said this now on four yeah. of these, but I would love to see people in personal bubbles in a mosh pit. Like, that would be yeah. inciting. People would bounce up, get stuck in the ceiling and shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking just bouncing around the venue like people with spikes yeah. of course would be idiots they'd pop themselves from the inside <laughs> dude 
I want to see a wall of bubbles. (laughs) A wall of balls. Yeah. The singers could get out there and just bounce around on top of them. (laughs) Not the guitar players. Fucking like bouncing off his playing. Dude, I'm saying it'd be well, great. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of liability there. I think there's a lot of liability. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm. I joke, but I'm afraid. No. Yeah. Never see it again. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Well, right on, brother. This has been awesome. I yeah. Love getting like this opportunity to really have a one-on-one with you. Right back at We've you. We've never had this. And no, we haven't. And uh, now I think next time we do see each other in person, it's gonna be it's gonna be human. Um. Thanks for being on here, dude. You're a great guy. And I look, I, I, of course, will be stalking you through the Facebook, but what an adventure you are going on. And uh, for somebody who's not in control of anything, you seem to be doing all right, man. Maybe it's a secret. Let go, motherfuckers. Just got to let it all go, bro. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I'm not doing that. All right, dude. (laughs) All right, man. Take care, brother. Thank you for being on. Peace, brother. All right, I'm going to hang up on you now. All right. All right. That was Brandon Ballin. What a great guy, dude. Uh, been in a bunch of bands in Alaska, done a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, as you said, you know, he, he was, he, we, uh, he, well, he described it. He, he described it perfectly, our, our, our relationship and our friendship and what it is. Mad respect always. And, uh, you know, small city, small town, small state, well, huge state, but, you know, Little rivalries that really don't exist exist, but there's never any animosity between us ever. And he's a talented guy. And what an adventure, man. And what great advice. And he's doing it. That's uh, that's what it's all about right there. So can't wait to see what he's going to do. And next time I see him, maybe we'll have him talk to us only in Norwegian. So, yeah, that was uh, Brandon Ballin. Thank you for being on, my dude. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you around. Rockcast, let's see who's next on A Moment With... Balloon. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is been a Dyson production. You can do this alone. Stay sane. Listen to the 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 Listen to the